Trapping plays a very important role in modern-day wildlife management. Professional wildlife biologists monitor fur bearer populations to maintain a healthy and sustainable harvest of this important, renewable natural resource. Trapping provides recreation and income for licensed trappers across this country. The Fur Shed Series, brought to you by Who's Your Trapper Outdoors. Who's Your Trapper Supply. Leatherwood Creek Trapping Sense. HTS Productions. Who's Your Trapper Deer Sense and Leatherwood Wildlife Art. All right, Top Dog is available. Sold out last December, early last December. And uh, we finally got it up and going. Um, the... Uh, Every year we ramp up and the demand for it's just kind of blowing up. So um, I think we're setting good now. Um, we'll have it, we will have it uh, at the National Trappers Convention in uh, Illinois here in a couple weeks. Uh, it's on the website presently. And then of course you can come here to the shop or you can give us a call and order whatever you'd like. So we do have it available in an eight ounce size this year uh, for those of you that don't need, you know, the bigger bottle. But um, we obviously we'll have it in our standard 16 ounce, 32 ounce, and gallon. So um, it's ready. All right, this evening, just going through traps from the last trip. When we when we pull these traps, we go ahead. You know, we got to, we wrap them and then go ahead and hook the trap on the drag, and that keeps things from getting all tangled up when we're to, you know get back home and get to this stage here. So get them apart as easily as possible. Basically, just getting things separated, and um, traps in one pile, drags in another. We'll go through and power wash everything, uh, dye what needs to be dyed, and then um, and then wax. If it doesn't really need to be dyed, in other words, if the trap didn't make a catch and it's still pretty clean, we'll just power wash and probably just wax. So um, always make sure that too that we've got two split rings, one on the end of the trap chain and one on the end of the drag chain. That way, if one happens to be um, sprung out or, or something like that, which I always say you need to check these things, they're one of the greatest pieces of hardware uh, for the trap line, but you have to make sure that they're still functioning and they're not sprung out or, or something to get, you know, get the edge of the chain or um, swivel and slide it through there and get loose. So um, that way I've always got a backup plan. I only need one at this point, but that way uh, if one's bad or if I missed it or whatever, uh, before then I've got I've got another one there so anyways that's kind of what I'm doing um, I have to just get the things get the things taken apart get ready to clean traps up and um, have things ready to go for this upcoming season all right I'm just gradually working through traps I got all the drags off the coil springs and first thing I'm starting with um, so I can use reuse my dye pot and I have to worry about residue uh, wax in there from the foot traps is I'm going through and doing all my body traps you know you can paint them you can speed dip them um, and to me sometimes they're still too slick uh, and they want to fire off too easily even with the paint or the speed dip so I just I just run them through the dye they don't get any wax um, and uh, if they pick up just a little bit of rest you know over time I'm not worried about it it's not going to affect anything at all um, a little bit safer obviously when you're handling them I've already done a couple dozen 330s. I've got a, just a handful more here. I've, and then in here, um, I think they're ready to go too. Yeah, I've got 110s in here. So I'll get those out of here. And um, I always take my traps out when the, when the dye is still going real hot because they, they dry real quickly. So I'm like I said, I'm just kind of working through my body traps first. If I, if I put the the coil springs in here first, then I'd have some wax residue in this dye, and I don't want the risk of that getting on these body traps, so that's the reason I'm starting with my body traps. I'll add more dye, more logwood dye, uh, use the brown powder, or red powder, or whatever you want to call it, and then um, and then I'll start my coil springs. But uh, uh, anyways, that's uh, that's what I'm doing here, and um, get everything you know in totes and, and uh, organized, be ready for season. Okay, something I've been working on is been building these um, hangers, essentially, for hanging stretchers on. 
the uh, I've built these for years. Um, basically, I mean, you can use a two by four frame uh, since I'm not going to be hanging literally hundreds of stretchers. Um, I'm, I'm using a two by four uh, to put up against the wall, and then basically a rip down two by four to build the, the frame. So just essentially, you're coming out here and then cut an angled piece for support. And it goes up against the wall like that. So, um, you know, real simple to put together, very effective. Put the stretchers on there. Um, and this is for wire stretchers, and um, you know, you're good to go. I'll show you show you some of the uh, couple that we've put up in here, and and um, um, you know what we're doing. All right, here's one that I put up on the wall here. Um, it's basically going to be for um, wire coyote stretchers, which I do use to a certain point. I mean, there's no reason to, uh, uh, in a lot of cases, to take the time to put our eastern coyotes on, on wood. Uh, the wire does just fine. Some may disagree with that, but um, um, believe me, we uh, um, our um, average to poor quality uh, eastern coyotes, um, it just, they just uh, it goes quicker. They're, they vary in size quite a bit, and the wire wire stretchers uh, work quite well for that. So um, coon stretchers can go on there too. I'm going to kind of play it by ear. I may actually add another hanger beside that number, uh, beside the other one, um, you know, for hanging stretchers up. But, uh, um, you know, in, in a lot of cases, I am going to use wood, so I don't need a lot of a wire stretcher uh, uh, hanging space. One thing I've done uh, here under the bench I've got, I put up a couple down here on the bottom for muskrat stretchers. I mean, they're under the bench, they're out of the way. Um, they're right there if I need them. Uh, I intend for the most part to do, um, you know, stretching for handling scraping on this end of the bench. Uh, so they're gonna be handy to get to. I've got, got quite a few more rat stretchers to put up. Um, and the ones that there need some additional cleaning too. I'm gonna go through and, and get those all cleaned up, power wash them and um, you know, get them cleaned up before I uh, completely hang them up. The uh, wire stretchers, you know, very important to have clean, clean stretchers, no rust um, that'll stain the fur. Another thing that I put together, um, since uh, the last uh, uploaded show, I um, put two shelves under here. One, um, one on the top, it's got mink boards, that kind of thing. It would hold wedges, whatever. Um, mink boards, I'm not a big mink trapper, but they're, you know, they're handy for a lot of things. For one, um, air ventilation up inside a number six coyote stretcher. And then on the bottom, I've just started putting, I've just now started putting coons, coon boards down there. Um, as I get them marked or whatever, that's where they're gonna go. The, the fleshing beam will be here, here on this end of the um, shop. So, um, um, you know, everything will kind of be in place right here. So I've got those, uh, those two uh, essentially open shells are just a two by four frame. Uh, they're not even covered, um, but um, they'll serve the purpose real well for that. All right, kind of back up. Still got a mess in here, but uh, just gradually working on getting things put together since the last upload. Um, kind of uh, put uh, put some uh, bar additional barn wood up on the up on the top edge there. Uh, I've completed the fiber board that I'm going to put up um, for the most part. Uh, the far fiber board area uh, is on that area that will be have the most contact with, with, with grease or fur or that kind of thing. So that's kind of where, where I'm at on all that. Um, you know, this is kind of a work in progress and, and I'm always kind of uh, improve things as we go along. Obviously, a lot of this is based on being around this for a long time. So um, I'm not saying that uh, it's gonna stay exactly like this uh, over time, but uh, uh, for now, this is kind of where I'm at. Um, put some decor up here. The um, um, traps on the on the cedar slab up there are just like kind of some collector traps that I had some additional collectors that uh, um, I didn't have up at the shop. And then the, the one shelf is, those are four and a half Sleepy Creek. Uh, long spring offset jaws and those those are basically there to remind me that um, we got a mountain lion trap and trip coming at some point as soon as we get something lined up so uh, that's, that's definitely on the bucket list that uh, we want to do uh, a couple some of our posters from the shop um, by the way this poster right here 
get over here to it. This is kind of our um, 40th anniversary poster, if you can see it. If you see it at a trapper's convention or at the shop or whatever, um, you can get them from us. If you buy something, they're free. Otherwise, they're just two bucks just to cover the cost of printing. Um, we'll have those available. We'll be at the National Trappers Convention here in a couple weeks up in Pecatonica, uh, Illinois. So, uh, anyways, that's uh, um, that's kind of a you know those are available if you'd like one. The other, and then the the little pack basket up there was uh, Jake's pack basket when we first started going years and years ago. So, uh, um, anyways, that's I guess that's kind of a sentimental value right there. But that's kind of what what I've been working on. Um, Got a lot of cleanup yet to do. I've been working on traps, which, which you've seen, and um, gradually getting things ready. But uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's, uh, you know, just come out here and work when I've got an hour or half hour or a couple hours available and come out here and do a little bit of stuff and, and uh, get this room ready. Here it is, mid, uh, mid July, basically. So, uh, pretty good, pretty good shape for uh, the upcoming season. We've got quite a bit more to do, but uh, we're getting there. So, 